over the last year or so, I've become extremely fond of three row midsize SUVs. For a number of reasons, even in my past life, there were very few things that I could not do as a father of two with a three row midsize SUV. As you very well know, you can put the third row down and you get colossal trunk space. But in the recent past, as I seem to not tire to mention, my life has changed considerably and this segment of SUV has never spoken to me more. I will just, you know, a little parenthesis here, say that nothing beats a minivan, period, for a family. Close the parenthesis. Okay. And it seems as though my mindset, having slightly shifted, that I seem to appreciate and find that this segment of SUV, though very North American it may be, given our outsized needs for something so big, um, each and every model that I review seems to be nearly ideal, with a few issues, like less than a handful, typically none deal breakers. All of these models, I'm talking about Volkswagen Atlas, Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, Mazda CX-90 being maybe the least interesting of the entire lot. I want to remember Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot. I know I'm forgetting a whole bunch right now because I'm trying to get them out. Uh, the Ford Explorer, which I just recently reviewed for the 2025 update, which really surprised me as well. Um, and then still, and I will say this now too, in my mind, on a four-year lease, for a family of five, six, or plus, nothing beats, in this segment, a Kia EV9. The power, the space, the styling, the equipment, the technology, the safety, the, the everything, everything, everything. Okay? But getting back to the internal combustion engine models, this one, I'm actually very, very much enjoying. And the main reason is because, uh, you probably can't see the front grille, but you can maybe tell based on the tires and wheels that this is a mid-trim Z71. Yes, that trendy adventure um, overlanding off-road uh, style or trims for a lot of these SUVs like the Atlas Peak Edition and a number of other ones. That version is typically not just the best looking, we're probably the best riding and driving. Uh, I forgot the Pathfinder, Rock Creek, right? Um, and this all new 2024 Chevrolet Traverse, the third generation of the Traverse, is of the Traverses by far the best. Laid out, technology, styling, it, it's the beefiest looking, I'll show you in a few moments. Um, and I, I feel like I'm gonna run out of things to say because there are only maybe two things, one being a problem and another one being another weird product planning decision. I am not going to accept the microchip shortage as being a reason for it. It's we're late 2024 at this point, so that cannot be an issue. We're not talking about it, maybe it still exists because we're not talking about, I don't know. But short of those two, perhaps three little elements, Every time I drive a midsize SUV, they kind of shuffle their way at or near the top, not taking over from the EV9, but definitely the Atlas gets knocked down. Even with the, the, the Highlander gets knocked down. Uh, Grand Cherokee L, there's another one. Even the Highlander gets slightly knocked down, though the hybrid powertrain still, you know, it's in the top two or three models below the EV9 for the efficiency, just overall speaking. Uh, but this one, I really, really like it. When, you, when you're in that mindset, wow, does this one tick all the boxes, or nearly. Anyhow, in the following video, as per the usual recipe, we will take a few laps of this very handsome 2024 all-new Chevrolet Traverse, and then go for a wheel-spinny drive. 
it's insane how quickly the sun goes down this time of year okay enough of that uh, styling wise definitely as GM put it when they put out the press release for this SUV this is the most truck of every generation of the Traverse I mean the front end is absolutely amazing I love and the, the fact that it's a Z71 as I've said just adds so much to the attitude for this truck the red tow hooks are to die for the grill the headlights Every, I mean, I can't find anything, absolutely anything wrong with the way this truck looks. And yeah, I will say truck. Um, okay, so pricing in the US starts at $37,600 for base front wheel drive. I won't elaborate on the trims, but uh, there you go. Canada, as always, very different layout. Uh, we get an LT all-wheel drive. That's the base model, and it is $47,999. At the top of the trim ladder is the RS at $62,899. Uh, base equipment, still fairly complete, as you might expect at this time, you know, in 2024, 2025. So you get 18-inch wheels, LED headlights, 11-inch digital IP, Power tailgate, 17.7 inch touchscreen display, heated front seat, steering wheel, remote start. I mean, it's pretty much all there. Really nothing consider you know, considerable missing. Um, as I mentioned, as you noticed, this is the Z71, by far the most handsome, most interesting version in the lineup. And it starts at, and I mean it, only $53,999, which, if memory serves, really isn't that far off the pricing of, say, said Atlas Peak Edition. But, I mean, they know who they're competing against. Uh, what you do get for the extra, can I math it fast enough, six grand, you get a different all-wheel drive system, which is a twin-clutch layout as opposed to just a regular all-wheel drive reactive system, though things I don't quite understand and this is the problem that I've had with a lot of GM all-wheel drive vehicles for the last I don't know five seven years six years anyhow it's got uh, terrain modes to go with that it's got hill descent control uh, these specific 18 inch wheels as I mentioned you get these uh, Goodyear Wrangler territory tires so all-terrain tires they just look great because of the sidewalls uh, you get all the extra moldings, you get the trailing, trailering pack as standard on the SUV. It, uh, it works for me. As well, it gets a unique suspension, which is almost an extra inch higher off the ground. So yeah, ground clearance is all of 7.76 inches, which is still, I'm, ju I'm just going to throw it out there, about two inches lower than, say, an outback wilderness. So yeah, yeah this is... This is the overlanding version, but it's you know far from being a rough and tumble uh, off-road SUV. Uh, my tester here, as you can see, um, as you see here, Super Cruise is included. That's like a four thousand dollar option if if uh, you're comfortable with that. Although you do become comfortable with that, uh, it's a great great system. It's got the massive power sunroof. It's got a very nice Evo Tex interior. Essentially, what you're looking at is $62,000 all in. And um, I still can't believe that saying 60 grand, there's value involved, but there's actual value involved. So, power hatch, as I said. Power hatch, as I said. Power hatch. There we go. Okay, so behind the third row, you have 648 liters of boot space, which is actually very, it's very impressive compared to said EV9 or even uh, a number of SUVs, including, I don't know, like a Santa Fe. Okay, it's not as big as this, but this is very usable, very doable, and you also get storage under the floor, which is amazing. With the third row down, you're looking at 1,603 liters, so almost 1,000 extra liters of boot space but as i said on a number of occasions there are four seats in here now because of the four kids so let's go around there you go thank you very much okay so it is very doable in this model you do get six seater configuration actually it's a seven seater but with the captain seats in the second row which is absolutely brilliant that means everybody can just travel through though space is limited ish i did sit in the back seat back there it's actually a little bit better than the one in explorer it's a slightly higher off the ground i know with the seats you can't really see it but 
the, the seat cushion, the lower seat cushion, cushion is higher off the ground than in the Explorer. But look, once you're on board and you're all set, it's actually very comfortable. In the seats, this is a Evo Tex. It's really nice material, very supple. I won't focus too much on the back, although I just did. Anyhow, but uh, it also has this really cool red cross stitching. And you get the headrest, the Z71. Fit finish, quite nice. Nothing to complain. The weird thing is that some of the plastics look cheaper than they actually are in a dashboard, but it's slightly textured and pat padded, but it looks cheap, but that's okay. I prefer it that way than the other way around. Uh, this is okay. I can deal with that. Now, here's one of those product planning decisions which I cannot get behind. So, auto up down only on the driver's side for $62,000, 54 you know, uh, before options. That That's not acceptable. Not in 2024. I don't know why that is. Uh, while I'm out here, I want to show you this button. Okay, let's can see that button where it says AWD. Okay, so that, to give you an idea of where it is vis-a-vis -vis the driver, let's get on board, start it up. So here's your 11-inch digital display, which is really nice. Some of the things change with it. Uh, displays, I mean, this is your 17.7-inch touchscreen display as well. It's very functional, straightforward. I like the fact that you kind of have some shortcuts right here. Um, home button, it's very, very user-friendly. And yes, if you have a petrol engine in your new GM, you get that, which is, a, I, in my mind, is a necessity and an absolute must and so on and so forth. Always like the fact that you have actual hard buttons for the HVAC controls here. Storage is not too bad. Good, good, good. You got a fair amount of space in here as well. And go just deeper. There you go. Uh, door bins are nice. I mean, like I said, the dashboard fit finished materials, everything is quite nice. I would have liked a pocket here, but I'm just being difficult. Um, otherwise, and uh, coming towards the end, oh, this is another feature you get. Your camera with the Z71. Uh, visibility is actually okay. That's despite the fact that the base of the A pillar is enormous. But, you know, if you just tilt your head slightly, you have a mild, tiny little opening there, which does help with the 90 degree turn. Otherwise, uh, it's not a bad place to be. I actually kind of like it. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, and there's the drive mode button too. So here you go, vis-a-vis -vis the driver, drive modes, which is fine, and the all-wheel drive button. So uh, let's go. Oh yeah, and I love the column shifter. Okay, so let's start with the suspension. Actually, no, let's not start because the sound just reminded me what's really important. So the only engine available in the third generation Traverse um, is the turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. Nothing psycho about that. I mean, most automakers now in the segment have two liter, 2.4 liter, or 2.5 liter, or whatever turbocharged four cylinder engines. There's still a few V6s out there. I'd say two advantages to the V6. One, they are a heck of a lot more quiet than these turbocharged four cylinder engines. And especially when compared to this turbocharged four-cylinder engine, they're actually better on fuel. Yeah, in short, uh, GM would have you believe that you can average about, I just did it now, about uh, 10 and a half-ish liters per 100 kilometers um, in normal combined driving with this. I've been doing, I've been good, generally speaking, though the power is kind of fun and i am averaging almost 13 liters per 100 kilometers and there, there's no way that in the winter i'm barely using ac barely using heat the temperature outside is ideal it's like 14 to 18 degrees celsius it's very comfortable there's no reason or external reason for this increased fuel consumption but uh, you know uh, hovering around 13 liters per 100 kilometers is just it's no good. I know this is a big SUV, but this is oh yeah, Durango, but it's on its way out. Um, there, there's no reason why it should consume so much fuel. Um, what else can I tell you? Yes, uh, the power. 328 horsepower and 326 pound-feet of torque. So that's a considerable amount of power, and torque is on from, uh, from 3,500 RPM. So it's uh, readily available and happy to oblige. Uh, this is made into an 8-speed automatic transmission. Yeah, the, the, the torque, the power. Well, that's actually one of the issues. 
Um, right now, well, obviously, I'm at a traffic light, so it's not going to happen. But I showed you the all-wheel drive button, right? The thing is, it's really, really weird, and it's probably better that I'm not actually driving so I can you know, talk about it and not actually do it. But the torque is so strong, and these Wrangler tires, knobby as they are, aren't exactly that grippy. And I said, right, it's still 14 to 18 degrees Celsius outside, give or take. The, the least amount of extra pressure, you know, to get moving a little bit faster, even at low speed, say, you know, below 20 kilometers an hour, Results in all wheel uh, results in front wheel spin. Front wheel spin. So what does the traverse tell you? Uh, change to all wheel drive to maximize driving conditions or traction conditions or whatnot. So you're at a light and you're like, oh, I want to get up. You know, I want to keep going faster. I should probably activate all wheel drive, which I guess I'll do now. So you look down and you activate it, and now you can, uh, you know, throttle a throttle, but you wouldn't do that anyway. The question is and remains, why is that necessary? There are no other, no other automaker, that's my tripod, no other, other, other automaker requires the driver to actually activate the all-wheel drive system unless we're talking about hardcore off-roading such as a Wrangler or even a Land Cruiser or something like that. It makes no sense. And the one answer I got uh, from GM for efficiency purposes, I don't buy it, no. Not, not, not at 13 liters per hundred kilometers. So that's, that's, that's the biggest bugger. Controls, bugger. Oh, ride quality, eventually, I'll get out of this traffic -y area, is really good. So the extra large sidewalls, the dampers that have been retuned for this Z71 mean that comfort, because wheel travel is permitted, um, is is really nice. I mean, if you could somehow remove the noise from the four-cylinder turbo, this would be a really nice place. See, that's very, very acceptable. Ride quality is nice. Handling is only affected if you're gonna push it hard, which you don't typically do in, in these vehicles. The ride is lovely. I really like it. And the seats are comfortable. The brakes, typically a GM staple. Pedal travel is limited. The response is good. The 8 automatic transmission, I have had absolutely no issues whatsoever with it. It goes from gear to gear and doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and most importantly, when I want it to do it or when I think it should be doing it. Look, all in all, in this segment, the fuel consumption and this all-wheel drive business button are the two things that hurt it the most. I, mean, I have to say, I think I like the Explorer's interior better. It's a little bit nicer, but this there's nothing wrong with what i'm looking at and staring at right now um otherwise i mean the atlas is roomier uh the highlander hybrid is far 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 more efficient like probably about half fuel consumption wise the numbers but if you were to draw like a middle line in the segment for value forget about honda and value they've, they've completely forgotten what that means um, this one is like a sweet spot and I'm specifically talking about the Z71 because of the styling because of the ride um, it's really nice see look that's not bad at all not bad at all I really like this SUV and what was I saying sweet spot yeah um, I hope maybe GM will have a hybrid version probably a plug-in hybrid but I'll deal with it then otherwise this is really really nice